we are going to make Zupa Toscana tonight for dinner, which is super easy to make. Some of the things that I normally do ahead of time that make it even easier <laughs> is I normally cook the bacon ahead of time. If we make it for like over the weekend, we make it for breakfast. I will keep like four slices of bacon, bacon aside already cooked. So then I don't have to do it when we go to make the soup. I forgot to do that today. So... <laughs> <laughs> we didn't have bacon this weekend and so I am going to be cooking the bacon from scratch when we do that and I set it aside and we put it back into the pan right at the very end. So the other thing that I do is most people do sausage that's ground. I do sausage links because of some of the dietary needs in our family. If they're links, my kids don't care to just pick those out, the ones that don't eat sausage. So I do it as links and then I cut the pieces a little bit bigger so it's easy for them to pick it out. So that's why I do links and not ground. If you have ground sausage, do ground sausage, but that's why you will see for us we do links and then this was already cooked the sausage and I had it in the freezer so again I'm not having to cook that when I'm going to make dinner I already had this in the freezer ready to go and I just have to slice it into slices and throw it into the pan so being able to do that ahead of time is great and then it's in the freezer ready to go for you and then um, normally I use russet potatoes but you know me I'm going to use up whatever I have in the house so I have Yukons today and that is what we're going to be using but either one russets or Yukons I don't normally peel them so I just wash them off really good and I put them in the pot with the peels so nobody minds and it helps save a lot of time but trying to think about being a little bit more low carb instead of doing potatoes you can totally do cauliflower instead so if you want to switch it out and do cauliflower instead of potatoes that will make this more of a low carb keto friendly diabetic friendly kind of meal for you so just think about what works for your family but a lot of people switch out the potatoes for cauliflower and then I kind of have the star of the show <laughs> of this kale. I don't always store the kale in a jar like this but um, it looks pretty and you know <laughs> I like it. pretty vegetables but anyways you can store kale just like you do lettuce or spinach so you can store it in a glass container or in a silicone bag but kale will last like at least a month so if you wash it when you bring it home I always make sure to like go down the middle of the rim down the middle here and get all the dirt out of it so sometimes it's closed up so I open it up and I make sure even though I washed it in the vinegar wash I'm going to go ahead and run it under the water too just to make sure there's no hidden anything in that seam rim seam I don't know whatever it's called and then I will just take a knife and I'm going to cut off the back of the seam and then chop this kale smaller so Kale and spinach are great ones that if you're not using it fast enough, you can just chop it up and have it ready to go and throw it into the freezer into a bag and then you can use it for like the next six months whenever you need um, to have greens. So if I wasn't using this fresh kale, I know I have kale and spinach both in the freezer. That would um, work perfectly for this. So, and this is just a pretty Parmesan. I have another Parmesan that's in the refrigerator that we are using up. So <laughs> this is the next one that we'll be using. And we'll be chopping an onion and using some garlic cloves. Onion, if I wasn't using the whole thing, I would totally put the other half of this. I am going to put the whole thing in there. But I would, if I was cutting the onion, I always cut the whole thing. And if I have extras, I put it in a glass mason jar with a metal lid and it won't make your refrigerator smell at all. And I know within the next 10 days, I will use it. So I always make sure to just cut up the whole onion whenever I'm going to use it. So what else do we have here? We have um, stock. This is actually turkey stock. So I'm not sure what I put in the recipe, but any kind of stock is going to work. If you have chicken stock, um, would probably probably be the best but beef stock turkey stock whatever you're going to use we have a, a recipe for this on the blog too and this was pressure canned to make it shelf stable I also have stock that I keep in the freezer so then we do a little bit of red pepper flakes we have some Italian seasoning and salt and pepper these are just things that are going to go in at various times in the recipe and I want to make sure that when you have that pot boiling you want to let it cool down a little bit before at the very end you're going to add your half and half or your cream. If the 
pot is boiling, your milk is gonna curdle. So make sure that it's not at that boiling temperature that you let it cool down a little bit and then add the milk, which just makes it just seem so creamy and nice and all of those things. And if you're avoiding dairy, you could also add like coconut cream instead. And then we top it at the very end with the Parmesan and the bacon crumbles, which just makes it amazing. So I hope you enjoy. Follow the recipe. It's on the blog, thecrosslegacy.com and enjoy one of our traditions. The soup has became a family tradition Tradition. It's warm and cozy and everybody likes it. I make it often during the winter time.